Wake Radio. This is a member of the NSA surveillance team. I have mined the metadata from this site and have discovered that the information provided here on Awake Radio is completely honest and informative. I recently have had second thoughts about my career choice with the NSA. It has become obvious that I am part of the real evil plan put into operation against the American people. I have decided with careful consideration to turn the table and utilize my knowledge and equipment to begin close monitoring of the American government. Without further ado, I would like to thank the producers, editors, and great hosts here on Awake Radio for the better understanding of truth, liberty, and justice. Thank you, Awake Radio. Welcome back to Rise of Awakening, everybody, uh, with your hosts, me, Devin, and... And me, Shannon. Hope you're all enjoying your Memorial Day. Um, and bear in mind that uh, just because it's Memorial Day, you're not supposed to, you know, you don't have to go out and barbecue. You don't have to go to all the Memorial Day sales. You don't have to... Consumerize. Be a consumerist. Um, we should all really look at what the holiday is really about. It's a, it's about remembering our veterans and all the the wars. Uh, and lives that were lost. Lives lost. Um, <clears throat> you know, re- whether it be a false flag war or just a general war, war is war. And we need to uh, remember those, those troops that uh, fought the battles. And... You know, it's okay to go out and enjoy your weekend, but just remember what the uh, holiday is really about. Um, I know we are. I mean, obviously, we're not out partying or camping or... You know, we're uh, we're doing our thing that, that we need to be doing. And taking part in uh, contributing to Awake Radio. And... Uh, so just just bear that in mind, folks. You know, if if you're listening, you're obviously not joining the uh, general crowd and, and doing all those things either. So it's all good. So we're all here together on Memorial Day, and that's kind of a themed show, somewhat, for us. Uh, we don't usually do that, but Shannon and I uh, took the time to uh, add to our playlist of music today to. Uh, only specifically bring in that genre of uh, audio entertainment during the breaks and or just when we feel like it because <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do so happy memorial day everyone happy and memorial day sorry for any hiss or any noise this is our first time going live with a whole new setup a new microphone a mixer board and which I got a lot of help with today, by the way. And you know who you are. Good, sir. Thank you, thank you. Otherwise, if I would have just chose to just roll with it, you'd be like, I'm not listening to this crap. It's all hissy and stuff. (laughs) But we're here. We're here. So, All right, so uh, anyway, on the topic of being at war for decades upon decades, we've been in the Middle East since 9-11, for over a, a decade. For for over a decade. And, you know, I wish we could just all get to a point where we were not really having to remember these veterans anymore, you know? And uh, don't take that the wrong way, listeners. It's, you know, enough is enough. Is this just going to be, you know, battle upon battle upon battle for and whatever reason? And some of reason? it's not even... It, some of it's just for resources. Well... And some regardless, of regardless, there. I mean, in the in the Middle East, you know, we're, we're fighting a war that that uh, was perpetrated by the acts of 9/11, and I'm not talking about terrorists with box cutters, folks. We all know it was an inside job. At least most of us should know that it's an inside job, or was an inside job. It's obvious. It's blatantly obvious to me, and hopefully blatantly obvious to uh, anyone. It's done their own research, right, Dr. Shannon? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, the thing that bothers me is that 
we have to always find a reason to go back a war because Al Qaeda is in the midst of things and and oh, yeah. Yeah. it's 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 sad because we're losing our soldiers for it and they're they're going in believing they're doing the right thing and they should believe they're doing the right thing but the problem is it's not the right thing no well war is not the right thing to begin with in my opinion i think any worldly dispute between countries can be solved with, without uh, losing the pawns in the game the the soldiers the the very young soldiers men and women going off to battle at age 18 and 19 You'll speak and beyond that. Beyond, and Shannon's Shannon's son is is going to be joining the military soon. He won't be on the front lines, but he, nonetheless, is joining the cause. And what we need to do is just kind of slow down that cause for war. You know, we don't we don't need to do this anymore, folks. No, and and for me, it hits a personal level because I'm. My son is leaving for the boot camp for Air Force uh, on July fifteenth, so I have a very short window of time. And um, I'm not discounting, I guess, of all the military branches. The Air Force is probably one of the better ones, but we don't know anymore. The, these kids, they, they can call upon them to do things that may go against the whole morale or what they've been taught, at least by me. My son is pretty much awake, but he just feels that there isn't a choice. College isn't a guarantee to get the job that to sustain your your living. He's going in to better himself, uh, but I guess the, the the point where I'm trying to get to, even that's becoming not necessarily <laughs> a betterment either, because a lot of these. Yes, veterans yes. that come back yes absolutely and we will get into that segment i know where shannon's going with this she, she's talking about returning veterans and uh the mistreatment and uh or no treatment of veterans returning but to stay on subject just a little bit uh we have a guest today he's going to call himself adam the caveman hippie and uh, we're going to bring him in here just right about now. Um, and we're going to discuss uh, some, some key points on, uh, on 9-11. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much all right. I think so. I think so. Yeah, and it, it, is, it is really a bad deal, you know. And, and uh, unlike others, I mean, you and I have both done our research. We, we know that... Um, it was perpetrated. It was an inside job, and yeah, and it's sad that uh, you know all these these poor people trying to better their lives through going into the military um, come back and have to face those things, and it's 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 really a bad deal under the guise of a false war, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, we're sending out the pawns, you know, and then I, I'm thankful that America doesn't have the Russian platform uh, in ways of doing things as far as, you know, after you're 18 in Russia, you have to uh, serve at least two years uh, in some form of community service, mostly military, and it's it's kind of against the will uh, of those young men and women, you know, they don't want to, it's but they, they have to, and a lot of times what happens is they, they get uh, bullied, they get, uh, they get uh, mistreated, they, you know, not necessarily have to go to war, but they're, they're, they're bullied and mistreated by their, their fellow, uh, you know, people around them, the, the other recruits or the unready recruits, I guess you could say, the unwilling recruits. But the ID has the Israeli Defense Force has the same thing. If you're an Israeli or live in Israel, you need to serve your country as well. Um, I'm not going to touch too much on Israel, but uh, it, it took me a really long time to get my mind around some of the things that they do that 
manipulate our government into a foreign policy that favors them. And it's something that's very diabolical and very manipulative. And um, we spend a, an awful lot of money sending it to Israel that uh, could further better our infrastructure here. Um, you know, we end these wars, we would have a lot of money to fix the broken things here in America. Um, infrastructure, the, you know, the roads, the bridges, you know, when that bridge collapsed in Minneapolis, or Minneapolis Minnesota, uh, it, 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 nobody saw it coming. Uh, but uh, it was a pretty rude awakening for America that we have some issues here that aren't going to get addressed when all this money is going to fight these wars and kill innocent people and these drone strikes my goodness I, I just can't think of anything more diabolical you know I saw uh, somebody holding a sign at a protest about drones and I thought it was perfectly said um, drones are the weapon of the 1% um, which the subliminal message there was it's a cowardly weapon it's absolutely a cowardly weapon because you're not facing the people that you're assassinating and uh, they do this thing called the double tap where they 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 hit the area with the drone and then when everybody comes to rescue them and, and try to dig them out of the rubble they send in another drone to mess them up too and uh, that's just where do people get the mindset that that's okay because it's not in any you know even how, how do you differentiate terrorist from a little kid right. you know oh well they, they call them uh, uh, casualties of war huh. well I, I call it murder and it's nothing less yeah it is it is murder and you know, it, to them, it's just a write-off. It's like, well, we got the one supposed, quote, terrorist that we were after, and, oh, yeah, we killed, you know, 23 innocent people in the process, but, hey, that's all in the name of war, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's it's just, you're exactly right, you know, it's, and, we, and we don't see that. They're not going to post these images on CNN of these 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 people being uh, you know wounded and killed in the name of war they're not going to show that at, on, on the, the mainstream media they're not going to because they're all within the game the profit as, as well it's 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 war for profit and hey yep. yeah so we lost a few innocents oh well That's and, and and you know some of the diabolical stuff the cia does uh if you look at benghazi i don't know how many people listening are paying attention to it but I have said from the very beginning in 2012 on 9-11 when it happened that this will be the end of Obama. Um, too bad it didn't happen before the election, but then again, Mitt Romney would probably be equally bad, if not worse. So uh, the lesser of two evils, but they're both still evil. Wasn't that what Jerry Garcia said? <laughs> um, you, you think it, about it, they're, they all are evil. They're just puppets in the corporate game. No, we're the puppets. Um, they're the they're the the minuet. Is that the word? Marionette. Marionette. Uh, that's true. That is true. And uh, you know, until you wake up, you know, and, and you see the writing on the wall, and you understand this stuff, and you don't. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, I've been researching since two thousand two, and I consider myself very very awake. Um, I know what's going on. I know you know how they're doing it, and what they're doing. I mean, your cell phone is putting radiation in your head. Now, that wasn't deliberate, like GMO foods, um, deliberate, malicious, or sky streaks, so to speak. Um, you know, these these chemtrails, uh, they're, they're, it's just downright evil. It's killing trees. You know, these redwoods that are in, in the forests out there that are um, dying because the soil is being contaminated. And, um the radiation from Fukushima that's on the West Coast that most people don't even know about. It's just unbelievable. Um, the, the weather create, that this created with harp that uh, possibly caused the tsunami that, that wasted that nuclear plant in Japan. And the Japanese government just 
doing a wonderful job of lying to the world about how bad it really is. Yeah, yeah. And you, you had mentioned marionette, and uh, let's let's go into a break, uh, Adam. Uh, if you want to mute your microphone, I think the appropriate song is just right at my fingertips here. And if y'all need to take a potty break or whatever, <laughs> um, feel free to do so. We'll play a couple in a row here. And like I said, uh, these are songs that uh, relate to our uh, theme for the day on Memorial Day. And uh, let's... <laughs> back hopefully everybody got a chance to take care of everything they needed to <laughs> i know i did my teeth were floating <laughs> just kidding okay uh yeah so we've been discussing the uh you know the uh horrific things about battle and war and uh, the the misleading lies that lead us there and the consequences after and um, all of the things that just build up into a, a heap of a mess of uh, no good. Um, oh my goodness, the kid is in the background sneezing her brains out. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, we, we, we all need to uh, be aware that uh, just because everyone supports troops um doesn't mean that we're supporting the troops for the right way or for the right reasons I might add it's quite ridiculous and I, I quite frankly have had enough and uh, well since we're on the subjects of things uh, hopefully my guest is still awaiting uh, Adam are you there brother I am alrighty see uh thing to it's the thing that's going to happen with this mass awakening is America is going to realize that we've been duped. Um, I say we, but, you know, I, I, those of us in the know haven't been duped at all. But, uh, you know, when, when America finally realizes that these criminal elite, I call them whale manure, because nothing's lower than whale manure, um, when, when they when the people wake up and realize that these guys are given life and limb to make them richer on false pretensions I think we're going to have a, a, a major meeting of the minds of those of us you know there's a lot of rich people in this world that uh, don't support the war that have the ability and the monetary um, uh, sort resources to fight back and fortunately a lot of them are going to come together and uh, and, and do the right thing and, and that is to help uh, um, uh, accelerate the awakening in the cause that is the truth movement you know 9-11 was the inside job that, that that initiated this whole chain reaction of, of hegemony and it's just the word I, there's one word I use but it's despicable it's um, just it's I, Adam I, I always liked your analogy about the uh, the backhoe shovel and the lighter do you want to do you want to bring that yeah. in well you know I've uh, I don't have a degree in physics and I don't have a degree in economics but if you research something like Ron Paul and and Ben then uh, uh, that the, the black guy who's you know bashes Obama, I forget his last name, but he's a physician, as is Dr. Paul. And uh, these people, just because they're doctors, doesn't mean they can't learn about stuff like the Federal Reserve and and their diabolical scheme. They're not federal; they're not reserve. But when I, in researching, I've learned a lot about physics and a lot about how it works. I already knew a lot about firefighting. But I know that 
a fire will never get hotter than its heat source. So the base of the World Trade Center, um, the core columns, 47 of them at the base, are four inches thick. Now, there's pictures that show the shape charges that were attached to those with the 45-degree angle, so the building will slide over, so it'll collapse. Um, if you take a backhoe bucket and uh, get it raised up to, say, chest level, and you take a big lighter and you hold it underneath that backhoe bucket and you light it, um, I don't know how long you think it's going to take for that big lighter to get that backhoe bucket hot enough to where it's going to melt. But I can assure you that in your lifetime and mine, as many big lighters as you can come up with, you're never going to get that backhoe bucket hot enough to melt or lose structural integrity. So that's what they want us to believe happened on 9-11 in comparison. And uh, it, it just that, that's just an analogy that I came up with. I was looking at this steel backhoe bucket at work one day, and I thought, now that is some solid steel there. Um, I wonder what it would take to melt it. Well, it would take a cutting torch um, that will certainly get hot enough to cut a hole in it. But a big lighter or jet fuel, jet fuel doesn't get any hotter than, I'm being generous, 1,700 degrees. Steel doesn't begin to lose structural integrity until at the very least 2,700 and it doesn't get red hot till 3,000. Um, these are things that I've learned by researching. Exactly, and, uh, exactly. You research, you yeah. Yeah, and you nope. you you know you know the facts just as well as I do, and we we've had this discussion uh, numerous times, and we we uh, had discussed you know doing a radio show based on all this because you know uh, it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist or a, a brain surgeon <laughs> to or a physicist. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't take a whole lot of uh, research to to understand that it's just a big sham, you know. And we keep pinning the uh, the bad guys, the the ghosts, the Al Qaeda, uh, the ones CIA. supposedly responsible, right? The Al Qaeda. <laughs> That's what Alex Jones calls them. <laughs> um, oh, and, and it's true. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been doing a lot of research about Benghazi and uh, how criminal it was. And the question that keeps coming to mind to a lot of people, especially Trey Gowdy, the guy that's going to be heading up the new prosecution, or not prosecution, but investigation. It'll be a prosecution, because he was a former prosecutor who has never lost the case in his career, um, I think. And uh, he's the perfect man for the job, and, and he's a, a true uh, believer in getting to the bottom of it. Um, but Oh, gosh, what, what? I'm ADD. Please forgive me, folks. But uh, it, it's just, it, it's mind-boggling when you try to explain to somebody who knows that the government is corrupt and knows that there's a problem and, and knows that there's there's issues. There's, there's a guy that I'm having a, a little bit of a debate with, and, and you know, he calls us spirit tards. Um, and it's like, you know, I'm not calling you names. I'm just telling you to watch this video. It's called Black 9-11, or, or Watch Who Killed John O'Neill. And if you want to know what happened on 9-11, watch Who Killed John O'Neill. It's kind of hokey to start, but it is the absolute biggest eye-opening video to the, the specifics about who planned it, how it was planned, what happened, and, you know, the logistics of how it was coordinated. And, you know, when... The smoking gun is building seven. I don't even know if this guy even knows about building seven, but oh, he just yeah. you know, he wants to call us names and what have you. And, and, and he admittedly agrees that, that our government's corrupt, but but doesn't believe nine eleven's an inside job, which is an oxymoron in itself. And I'm just, my thing to him was: see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, and you'll you, you just go ahead and close your eyes and bury your head in the sand, and you'll get there someday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wake up, America! Please, America. What's time. wrong? What's wrong with America? There ain't nothing wrong with America. There's a lot what? wrong with America. There's so much wrong with America. But foreign had... policy. <laughs> yeah, is what's wrong with America. We need to 
well, our, our troops are for defense, and we haven't been using them for defense. We've been using them in very uh, egregious offensive objectives that are just t- diabolical. Um, I, uh, I, I just get almost sick to my stomach when I think about the parents who... Uh, there's a picture um, on one of these videos that I saw of a woman laying on her husband's grave crying and this picture is captioned along with another picture of a, uh, a C-130 full of coffins draped with American flags and bushes talking about, well, don't, didn't find any, any weapons here. Um, and then all his buddies are laughing. Well, there's no weapons here. And all his buddies are laughing. Then these captions of pictures of American flag draped coffins are interjected. And it just, it, it's so hard hitting. You, you need to also uh, check out the video. Um, it, it, it's done by a group called uh, Last War Films, and it's called Friction uh, to Stop the Machine. Um, they also do several other videos that are just phenomenally well produced, well narrated, and uh, they're just a bunch of captions of these these criminal elite in action. Um, using our troops to further enrich themselves. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, right. It's it's all for the betterment of the of the elitists, the empire, if you will. And uh, in my opinion, <coughs> Adam, the caveman hippie, uh, I, I believe that uh, we are reaching that pinnacle of of power, or they are reaching their pinnacle of power, and they, they, they can't go any further. They, they've already ex- expounded on all of the military resources and the technology and they've they've they've, they've perfected their game but the, at the same time people really are uh waking up and they're they're understanding that hey wait a minute man this is a big sham the other Ooh. thing that's happening right now is that they've gotten their heads so big that they're slipping up and truth is starting to spill out and their agenda is starting to become so far out there, and we've discussed this before, something as stupid they wanted to regulate cows and their flatulence. We've discussed this before. I'm, I'm talking silly stuff. Because they, they, right. they, they assumed that they were, we're so dumbed down that they can throw out any regulation they want based on the fact that they just have to regulate because it's all in the best interest of the world and and our wars and our environment and so on and so forth. Well, most of us that are aware are not buying the story, and it's becoming more and more obvious. They're slipping. Well, they're slipping, but, you know, all these things are distractions, Um, you know, to keep us focused on what the left hand is doing while the right hand is doing something else. And, uh, you know, when you watch these news stories, um, uh, not not to... uh, you, you look at stuff like uh, what, what annoys me more than anything is somehow or another there's a television show on A and B or on TLC what well, TLC is supposed to be the learning channel that's what it once was and it, it had a very good format um, I don't watch television anymore but there's a show on from what I understand called Honey Boo Boo I don't mm. know if you've heard it or not heard but, of it, never watched it well, maybe neither, but you know, I, I'm I'm sure that they are fine, fine uh, you know, fine young rednecks. But they, uh, this show is a if you're watching Honey Boo Boo, you really need to get a life because you're watching theirs, and it's just <laughs> unbelievable that people can be so lost in, in their sense of what they're doing with their lives as to tune into something like somebody else's life. Um, you know, you need to dig into your own life and, and do something productive. Research, for Christ's sake, and, and learn about what's going on. I don't know if you've ever listened to Rage Against the Machine. Um, they are a band that uh, has kind of a, a metal twist to it, but they're, they're oh, very, very abs- loud. And absolutely. Yeah, they have a they have a great message in most of their music. Yes, they do. And I have written about ten thousand words of li- rhyming lyrics. I would love to just give them to use. You know, it's it's not formatted. It's just a bunch of rhymes 
that uh, would be great for you know their music. I'm, they're, they're welcome to it if they can get in touch with me somehow, um, because I'm sure they would find it to be uh, very useful um, in, for the productions. But yeah, their, their message is really clear, and there's a lot of other bands coming out with that type of message, um, and uh, more of them need to be seen because if you notice that when you were listening to music on the radio, you can sing the words and, and hear the song, but are you really listening to what they're saying in the songs? You know, Kurt Cobain was, uh, you know, uh, probably suicided. Um, they say Michael Jackson was too. I don't know about this stuff. I don't speculate about stuff that I don't know about, but uh, we pontificate about stuff that I do know about. And what I do know about is the conspiracy that is our federal government and every administration. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, Adam, uh, can you wiggle your input just a little bit? I'm just getting you through the right channel. <laughs> yeah, it's always a, such a <laughs> joy. <laughs> it, it's all getting audio all together. It, we, most of us radio show hosts know we have some technical difficulties. Tip, tip, te- technical te- difficulties? <laughs> that's a tongue twister. <laughs> technical difficulties. It does happen, but that's all right. I mean, yeah, we're just we're just getting a slight little bit of the right channel predominance, and not the left. And most of us on radio do understand this. We've we've had plenty enough setbacks. Still, <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. You know what? Just stay on the line there, Ed. truth in alternative media with great programming and hosts like the liberty beacon with roger landry a change of perspective with true seeker 22 shake and wake with rick and annie grassroots music with paula and many many more tune into awakeradio.co.uk or awakeradio.us honest informative and aware awake radio and we're back. Sorry about the uh, audio dropouts and problems. This is our first time using a mixer, mixer board <laughs> to all of you in the audience, and then thank you for your patience and uh, your your ability to uh, withstand the flaws. Well, let's just put it this way. We only had a short window of time to get this together. But that's okay. Everything is trial and error. That's the best way you learn it. That's right, yep. Um, we we do the best we can, and uh, gosh darn it, absolutely, it's not good enough. But we're <laughs> we're gonna get there. We are going to get there, folks, and there's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, as time rolls on, we're gonna get all of these little glitches and things sorted out, and we will definitely be on the up and up sooner or later i hope otherwise we're just going to lose listeners and we'll just have to leave the station oh whatever not <laughs> <laughs> no, no way jose <laughs> no we're we're not going to leave the station we're, we're just got to perfect a little bit more and it's getting there yeah we're getting there we're getting there everybody, okay so everybody we got to yeah, everyone else seems to think that we're doing all right and that that's all that matters we got the great hosts on awake radio here we've got uh Shaking Awake, Rick and Annie, we've got uh, uh, Rick Rittenor, we've got uh, Alan Taylor Shearer, we've Chrissy. got uh, 
Chris yes, Yu. We've got uh, a number of great people that are backing us right now. And uh, we've all had these pitfalls. And any of you listening right now uh, expecting perfection, well, you've come to the wrong place. But <laughs> don't go there. anywhere because we are young. We are new. We are just starting to uh, simulcast on other networks. And, uh, yeah, we're getting there. And, you know, we, we had a request in the chat room um, for a song called Sweet Madam Blue by the band Styx. Let's give that a go. And, and we'll, then we'll, we'll bring Adam right back and we'll on. we'll bring Adam right back in. Uh, Adam, are you uh, muted up? <laughs> Apparently he is. All right. Let's um, go. I can talk now, I guess. <laughs> He's um, you know, your audience will do nothing but grow, my friend. Um, you know, people are awakening, and uh, too slowly, in my opinion, but but awakening nonetheless. And the only way we're going to get our republic back is for enough people. And I have one idea that I think would absolutely accelerate this, but it's got to be a coordinated effort with most of us in the awake movement. And we, you know, we would have to get it together, like. The march on Monsanto the other day. Yeah. Um, so yes. we'll talk about that off the air one of these days and maybe see what we can do to get okay. that going. All right. Well, we're rocking this show with the uh, Memorial Day, so you know why not have some music? Let's go ahead and play this request by uh, uh, Rick and Annie from Shaking Awake. Rick and Annie. Okay, uh, we're back in the midst of Sweet Madam Blue. On my end, it just wasn't sounding quite right. I don't know. I don't if know how M- it sounded to MP3 you guys. MP3 was uh, too high up on the spectrum, but uh, it's a good song. <laughs> good song, great song. But uh, we'll have to do a different mix of that soon. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're we're here and. Uh, Let's bring up the returning veterans uh, situation. Um, if you want to join us back there, Adam, you're welcome. Go ahead and unmute. And uh, yeah, you're. Uh, I, I noticed that your your clock must be wrong because that didn't seem like six minutes and thirty three seconds. No, but, uh, no, we, no uh, we we had to stop it. It's a little skippy. We, we backed it off because it was just it was uh, playing up too loud. It wasn't. Uh, Either a, not a good download or, or something. And, and but we'll, we'll refine it at some point. Indeed a great song, though. Um, yeah. Good request. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, uh, uh, gosh, I just, I, I'm, we're running out of time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, these, the, they want this new world order so bad and they can taste it now. Um, so with the exception of, the American troops turning their arms against the American people, which I don't think will happen. I don't think so uh, either. I, I think there's, you know, people, they didn't join the military to be, they joined to be patriotic, and a patriot's not going to fire on an American citizen. I don't care what, unless they're armed and they're fighting back. But, well, you know, uh, I don't think if we have this war amongst ourselves that the American troops are going to be turning their guns on no, the American and, and people. And be, a good point that you make, Adam, because a lot of these people are coming back, and here is what we want to discuss. Um, yeah, yeah, we were we were going to discuss the uh, VA healthcare system and uh, uh, the the uh, hiding of the flaws with with the system of returning veterans, and uh, the list is growing and growing and growing. In fact, they haven't even uh, had a chance to deal with uh, a lot of the Vietnam veterans. Uh, um, up, up to current and we have a we have a backlog we have a backlog and uh, 
In this article, well, it says that uh, three years ago, Edward Laird, a 76-year-old Navy veteran, noticed two small blemishes on his nose. His doctor at the Veterans Affairs Hospital in Phoenix ordered a biopsy. But month after month, after the blemishes grew larger, Laird couldn't get an appointment. Laird filed a formal complaint, and nearly two years after the biopsy was ordered, got to see a specialist who determined that no biopsy was needed. Incredulous, Lair successfully appealed to the head of the VA in Phoenix, but by then it was too late. The blemishes were cancerous. Half of his nose had to be cut off or cut away. He says, now I have no nose and I have, no, I have to put an ice cream stick up my nose at night so I can breathe. Lair oh, said, God. I look back at how they treated me over the years, but what can I do? I'm, I'm too old to uh, punch them in the face. <laughs> uh, the Phoenix VA healthcare system is under Federal Justice Department investigation for the reports that, the main, that, the, that it maintained a secret waiting list to conceal the extent of the patient delays in part because of the complaints such as Laird's. That's what we were talking about a yeah. minute ago. Mm -hmm. um, exactly that. The Phoenix, Phoenix, they're just corrupt as hell. Um, and, and you know, the thing is that these people are labeling our vet returning veterans as as domestic terrorists now, and, and they're trying to go after their firearms and stuff. And I would say that our Second Amendment is probably the only thing that has kept the uh, New World Order from. Uh, reaching its its diabolical conclusion you know I, I i've come up with something better than nwo and, and how about um onw for an orderly new world without these elitist scumbags and you know the rough have more money they're the only trillionaires in the world they have enough money to feed clothe and house every single person on the planet well i would say that when we get our republic back and we uh, maybe we need to raid the coffers of these rich elitists and get their gold from them because of course gold is the only thing, gold and silver are the only thing that are truly valuable uh, you know, the tradable commodities so to speak because cash is just printed paper and quantitative easing is just printing money they can call it anything they want, fancy or not, but that's all it is, is printing money. And once the petrodollar goes, um, or once these other uh, countries decide that they're not going to use the dollar to trade for oil, we're not going to have the ability to print money anymore, and the fraud is going to be exposed, and that is when the dollar will collapse. Um, yeah, and that's... All I knew about finance before I started investigating it was that the decimal point goes second to the end on the right. And that was pretty much all I knew about finance. I've learned a lot about derivatives. I've learned all about fractional reserve banking. And I've learned all about the Federal Reserve and their, their non-federal agenda. Right. It's getting to the point that, you know, I've said this before on many shows, I'm all for going back to the bartering system because honestly that piece of paper is just junk. <laughs> it is junk. <laughs> it's just junk. Federal Reserve note is what it says. Um, you know, it it's just whale manure run amok. And then nineteen thirteen our president Wilson got hoodwinked and everybody all the Congress people were on vacation for Christmas and Nobody was there but the few people that they got to sign it in the law. And the next thing we know, we have a central bank. And uh, Jackson, to his credit, said Jackson and no banks. And that was the thing he ran on. They tried to assassinate him. And uh, the guy with two guns, they both misfired. So thankfully, he didn't get Jackson. And Jackson, I think his final words were, I killed the banks or whatever, which you know is very poignant. Because unfortunately, they have come to life in their evil uh, empire, so to speak. It, it, they're uh, th that's they used to say that kill all the lawyers because they were allegedly evil. Well, 
Um, not so much anymore. I think bankers, at least uh, uh, Federal Reserve type uh, central bankers, are the ones that are evil. And, and the ones that are really truly evil are just jumping off the high cliffs there. Yeah, and and the reason they don't want to feed the starving people in the world is because if they feed them, they'll breed more and there'll be more people of them that they have to kill when they reduce the world population. Um, yeah, you know, just, yeah. No, no, this no. is said once upon yeah. a time the most despicable thing I think any statesman's ever said, and that is that military men are just stupid animals to die in the name of foreign policy. Mm-hmm. Now, if that isn't something to be, if that's not traitorous, I don't know what is. Well, we're, but they're basically you know, fodder. We have got to see people like Kissinger and Penis Cheney. These people need to go to the gallows or at least federal penitentiary before they meet their maker by natural causes. They just, I, I, it kills me to think that they could die of natural causes without first meeting some justice here in this world. Um, I don't, there's going to be people that disagree with me, but, um, no, I believe in karma. I I really do believe in karma. Me too. I mean, it's, it, it may not happen as soon as some of us would like it. But at some point, you can't have dark without light. You get too much dark at some point, something's coming through. There's got to be a balance yeah. to everything. Cynthia McKinney said it, and I love it. She, I, I think she quoted her mother, but her mother quoted somebody else, and, and she said, uh, sunlight is a great disinfectant. Um, you know, so when you expose these people, and she was one of the few people in Congress, along with Mark Dayton, a Minnesota senator or congressman, um, who was speaking truth to Congress. He says, um, you know, this stuff, it, the money that, that Enron, uh, or he, he said something to the effect of, uh, this stuff isn't worth an Enron pension. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, uh, he didn't believe the lies that they were telling us about 9-11, and Cynthia McKinney was all over them. And, of course, what they did was during the primary, they had a Republican run as a Democrat to unseat her and um, and, and was were successful at that. And she's um, now on the Global Research as a contributor, and she has her own thing. I, I, I adore this woman. She speaks truth to power, and uh, and that's what it takes. You know, it takes a lot of, a, a lot of what, what we call chutzpah, to speak truth to power, but chutzpah is basically gall or balls, so to speak, to open your mouth and when you see something wrong, say something. See something, say something, but, you know, don't snitch on your neighbors if they're not doing anything illegal. I mean, this war on drugs is almost as diabolical as the war on terror. Um, just right. doesn't kill quite as yeah. many. Yeah, and if you, if you don't believe it, just ask uh, Nancy Pelosi or... Uh... Frankenstein, Feinstein. They'll, they have all the answers. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and you know, that, that's just it. See, uh, Democrat and Republican both. You know, people say, oh, well, my brother, he le- leans to the right, and uh, or to the left, my bad. And I, I have become a lot more right-leaning in years recent. I voted for Obama the first time around. Um, don't know. I, I guess I believed all the hype. Uh, there's a lot of us that voted for in the first time around that believe the hype and, and the awake movement. A lot of us we realized that after... We, we thought that I perhaps mean, it'd be different for once. Yeah. Well, that's what he said. He ran on a campaign of change and transparency and he has got this gigantic huge wall around his administration to keep anything but transparency. He said whistleblowers will be welcomed with open arms but he has done nothing. But persecute Absolutely. Them. Um, yeah. Eric Holder is a criminal. They're all criminals um, in his administration, especially Hillary. And uh, I've watched a couple of different videos about the Clintons and how many people they've murdered, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, 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 and suicided. Vince Foster, in particular, was one of the more uh, diabolical, uh, not believable people. And a lot of women Bill Clinton raped got murdered because they were speaking up. And he raped a lot of women. Um, you know, it, it, I thought he was the best president in the world ever. And uh, but going, going finding, back, going back to Hillary, Adam, uh, what was her comment on the Benghazi? Uh, what difference oh, does it make? Mean, she says at this point, what difference at this point does it make? 
It it does. <laughs> well, in in my in my eyes, in your eyes, it does make a difference. She was just trying to sweep it under the rug, and that's the thing. She you thought, were, I have enough power, I can just sweep it under the rug. Who cares? Never our eyes, but the family of the Patriots, the Navy SEALs, um, um, Glenn Doherty, Sean Smith, um, Mr. Stevens, and um, gosh, I'm sorry, I forget the guy's name. Um, I'll remember it in a minute, but I used to know them. These guys died fighting to the death. They, to the death, they fought so they could fight no more. It is despicable that they're trying to cover this up. And I, I believe that Trey Gowdy is going to get to the bottom of it. And fortunately for the American people, this will be the catalyst to the awakening that is the the corruption of our federal government. And, uh, you know, I think once the ball gets rolling and if Obama does get led away in handcuffs along with his administration, um, you know, I think most people don't know who Valerie Jarrett is. I, I feel that Valerie Jarrett is to Obama what Karl Rove was to George Bush. Mm -hmm. You know, his evil genius or as they call him, the architect. And uh, she, people don't even know who she is. Um, I, I only recently learned about her and, and just done a little digging on her and, and she's uh she's ooh, um she's in the White House, all you know, I guess she is there too. She's his his uh, right hand woman, so to speak. And uh, she's very, very evil from what I hear. I'm probably gonna be a, by the way, I'll never kill myself, so if something happens to me that says I did, you know better. Yeah. Um, so, well, uh, if you're if, not on a watch list, yeah, you should be ashamed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're not on a government watch list, you should be ashamed. You, believe of me, I may not be. I may not be on the no-fly list, but they they are watching me. Um, you know, maybe not physically, but they're you know they're keeping an eye on my emails and stuff. I I say as are most of us in this movement. We're oh. believe me when I tell you, we're on the NSA radar. Hey, we forgot, we forgot to say hello to the NSA. <laughs> hello, NSA. Happy Memorial Day. Sorry you're working overtime trying to uh, uh, Decode keep us all was. sorted out and uh, <laughs> keep an eye on us. Uh, yeah, but, you know, if you get that overtime pay and you're listening to the show, welcome. Don't get me wrong. The NSA has a purpose, but it's not to spy on the American people, especially right. Indian American people, trying to wake people up. A lot of the government officials that are in this game don't even realize that they're being manipulated um, and, and, and a lot of them until, until they do you know you take Snowden for example he had enough he saw what we were doing and, and or what they were doing and, and just said he couldn't do it anymore he couldn't consciously live with himself and continue to make a great living and, and, and be a traitor to his people so he spoke up and uh, oh, thankfully he did yeah, look at all the generals that um, Obama pretty much abolished out of uh, head military because they probably had enough, too, that, uh, no, we're not following your agenda. It's not happening. So they just decided to wipe them all out. Mm -hmm. Not not physically, but remove them from office. Yep, do as I say, not as I do. Pretty much. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, I really think, I thought... You know, I saw a bumper sticker once that said W, worst president ever. Well, at the time, I agree. But now I'm thinking he makes W look like the little girls that knock on your door and try to sell you cookies once a year. <laughs> you <know>? Girl Scouts. <laughs> oh, God. He, man, this guy. Um, I, I, I just wonder if the promises that he made when he ran for office, that if he really meant them, or did he get the, uh, you know, the introduction when he got in the White House where somebody said, you're going to do what we tell you or you're going to go the way of JFK? Mm -hmm. um, because it, do you have to wonder when JFK was in Dallas just exactly what he was going to say when he was going to go to his next speech before he was assassinated? Not by um, the Patsy, but assassinated, but why, by, I think... Um, was his driver? I think the guy's name was Greer, um, who was driving the limousine. Every, you know, people will say that's not, you know, that's a reflection or whatever. But it looked to me like he turned a gun around with his left hand and shot over his shoulder and blew his ass away. Um, much, that's yeah. and that's why Jackie was headed out the back of the car 
because she saw the bullet come from the driver. So she's on the way out the back because she knew that if she hit the deck of the car, she wasn't going to be protected. He could just shoot her down there. Hey, and, uh, of course, she was shocked. You know, this is my opinion. You know, um, always to my opinion. Um, not fact. But fact is, it wasn't Lee Harvey Oswald, though. I can tell you that. Mm-mm. He was just a scapegoat, one that just decided to use as a pawn, so to speak. Well, Kennedy was speaking truth, uh, speaking about the truth um, before he was assassinated. So they were having to fear, geez, you know, he's going to come after the Federal Reserve, he's going to come after the CIA, he's going to take their teeth out. And um, and his next speech, if the last one was, was bad, they can only imagine what the next one was going to be. So Johnson didn't like Kennedy anyway because Kennedy uh, belittled him for how stupid he was. And... Uh, you know, like like W. I don't, but you know, W was just dumb. Cheney was the one running the country back then. Um, you know, W was just a mouthpiece. Um, Anna Bush, and of course, if you're a Bush, you're uh, you're part of Satan's uh, plan. You know, I don't think the Bushes worship Satan. I think it's the other way around. Clintons. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, it it does. There is, uh, they are evil. Uh, his daddy was evil. His grandfather was evil. His grandfather was a Nazi collaborator, oh, yeah. and was even, but he was even prosecuted and uh, somehow managed to keep his butt out of prison. Um, I, 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 I learned about it in research, and uh, I, I just there's so many different things that I know a little bit about, but there's a few things I know a lot about. Right. And Benghazi, the Gulf oil spill, another false flag in my opinion um it, it and uh it's such a it's such a huge thing I, we can't really get into it now but eventually we can talk about it but uh they their goal is to uh, bring in the next ice age they've got their underground bunkers they'll live you know indefinitely they've got these sea banks to keep you know the food growing and you know they could live forever with their money they've got stuff underground that goes for hundreds of miles across the country underground. Oh, I wouldn't um, doubt it. Under Denver Airport. Google that. I, um, we ha- I was just about ready to point on that factor. The DIA Airport in Denver. Prime example. They have well, so many tunnels going up underneath there. It's yeah, like a it used port. to be Stapleton Airport, but, um, you know, I guess Stapleton Airport lost its, uh, its allure to them, so they wanted to modernize it. And now it's it's, from what I understand, a huge metropolis underneath that Pretty place. Pretty much. And have you ever seen the murals that are in their it, airport itself? I was going to say something. That, that's that's exactly right. They're all diabolical, New World Order, global hegemony murals. And, and they're blowing it up right in our face. They're, they're showing us, and they're laughing at us, mm-hmm. you know, because we're not seeing these blatantly obvious signs that are telling us what they're hegemony plan is and and people just aren't getting it I mean you have to hit them with a brick to mm-hmm. wake them up and some people won't wake up anyway and it's right there in front of their face yep it's right there all over and I don't know that there's anything that isn't like that in the airport haven't been there yet I, it's um, been a while but from what I remember seeing the murals that were there I was like whoa it, why is this on walls at the Denver International Airport. That's weird. But when yeah, it dawned on me the symbolism behind it, I was like, oh my goodness. That's insane. That's the closest international airport to you guys, too, isn't it? Right, right. We're here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, so this is what, two hour drive down to DIA? Yep, down I 25. Um, it, it is I 25, right? Yep. yep. Um, straight shot. But uh, yeah, I've been all over your neck of the woods. Beautiful <laughs> country. Yeah. Um, as is what anything west of Denver on Interstate 70. People haven't seen it. Um, we have a beautiful country. We have beautiful people. We have beautiful traditions and, and, and wonderful, uh, you know, history. But uh, what's coming into shape now, as, as George Bush says, I can see a new world order coming into view. <laughs> and we will have our new world order. Um, <laughs> you know, like, I forget, uh, was it Warburg that said, uh, we will have our new world order by con- 
by consent or conquest, whichever. Um, but but you know when Bush talks about the new world order, you can bet yeah that it ain't going to be good for the ninety percent to get sent to FEMA camps to get buried. Um, you know, and they're just it's so evil. Just I, it, I, it just evil. makes me sick to think that evil can live like this and and just be so inhumane but they uh, when Alex Jones exposed Bohemian Grove and they did their cremation of care ceremony which is for the rich to just they're, they're cremating care so they don't have to care about the screams of the suffering people um, they, they just don't care they, they're absolutely they don't hear it they you know kind of like Dr. Mengele in the Nazi death camps where he did live autopsies on people you know he had to mute them, you know, or put something over their mouth so you didn't have to hear their screams. And it's, it, it just blows me away that people are alive that live and, and with themselves and are able to have that kind of inhumane attitude. You know, you can kill your dog if your dog is dying, but you can't kill your loved one if they're dying. You know, thank, you know, Dr. Kravorkian was a great man, and I think people should be able to. If their loved ones want to go, they should be able to go humanely. They shouldn't have to wait and suffer um, the way that... But that goes uh, back to a lot of times, you know, most of us would be healthy if we our food and our air and all those things weren't food being genetic, genetically modified and our air being poisoned. We wouldn't have half these problems if everything was organic and going back to the organic way of things. I agree, and, and you know, sometimes I feel like I'm clogged up with, I, I, I wake up and I'm just weak, I don't have energy I, that I used to have years ago, you know, I'd bounce out of bed and go do my thing, but now I just feel like, oh gosh, you know, i got to take up five hour energy or something similar to, just to get going, um, I don't do coffee too much, so, um, I just feel like I need to purge my body of all this toxic BS that's in it, and, um, you know, and probably, oh God, just <laughs> well, scratching my head, thinking, "What can I do?" Well, the rabbit goes deeper. The rabbit hole. Oh, goes rabbit deeper. hole goes deeper. It really does. Well, uh, you ready for another break, there, Adam? Uh, am I? I don't know. You're the host, brother. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's let's go ahead and mute up and do another break. We're gonna we're gonna play John F. Kennedy's speech. And all right, then, ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, 
diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. For I have complete confidence <laughs> in the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance. All righty, and we're back. Hope you all enjoyed the the break with the JFK speech and everything else that followed. We just thought we'd follow suit since we were talking about that. And uh, are you still with us there, Adam the Caveman? I am. That that was cool. I, I was hoping that was true. Um, maybe uh, they're coming out with their hands up. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Um, <laughs> That's there will come jingle. Time. What did I miss it when I was sleeping today? <laughs> um, but that would—that's you know—that's my dream. I mean, to see these people brought to justice. It, it's just, um, you know, George Bush said he didn't know where he was when Kennedy was assassinated. But I can tell you, um, when his New World Order coming into view, he—he uh, he was undoubtedly in Dallas, Texas, <laughs> doing something to um, help make sure that Kennedy didn't make that speech that day. And, um, the guy is just, oh God, he, he's just, uh, he, I, he, I'm not religious, but he's Satan's spawn, and he spawned more little Satans and his kids with, <laughs> with that evil wife of his. Um, you know, eh, well, I'm not even going to go into all that, but, you know, when he said, well, we can see a new world order coming into view, and with the United Nations, we'll, be able to have a, a you know an old, a, 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 a warless society. Well, I can tell you this much: UN, United Nations, uh, that is you know New World Order talk right there. The UN is their their I guess their base of conspiracists that are all together in this 
plan. You know, Adam, and, I actually met him in, back in 19, uh, senior, George Bush senior. In 1990, I was a senior in, uh, here in Wyoming. And I remember I shook his hand and it felt like, oh my goodness, it felt cold. I didn't even want to touch him. Something just told me this man is just pure, insane evil. Yeah, my dad uh, met Nixon and didn't shake it, deliberately did not shake his hand when Nixon offered it. And I imagine that probably kind of slapped Nixon in the face. But uh, Nixon was the least of our evil presidents, in my opinion. I mean, you know, they compare the Benghazi to Watergate, but there's no comparison. It's nothing like Watergate. This is 10 times. Uh, this is a thousand times worse than Watergate because people died, and uh, I'm just going to interject my opinion, and, uh, and and that is that I think I'm not sure if it was Ann Coulter, one of these Fox contributors. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a Fox News fan, but I watch them because nobody lies the news like Fox, and I like to get their take, their spin, so to speak. But on Benghazi, they've been on top of it from the very beginning and they're the only network to stay on top of it. The other shame stream corporate media scumbags aren't touching Benghazi because they're you know, they're on Obama's side. And uh, you know, to to Fox's credit, they've stayed on top of it and they're bringing shining a lot of light on it and uh I lost my train of thought. Um there's just so there's much that ABD again. Um but he, uh, uh, well, I'll get it back here in a minute. But <laughs> you, you were you were saying that you know you, you shook his hand and it must have it, it felt cold. You know, I, it, it I, did. I had public. to I had to retreat my hand immediately because I was like, oh, can't well, yeah, can't do it no more. Reptiles are cold blooded, so I just know to me I felt pure evil. Oh, it, it yeah. was I, I I barely even just gingerly Can touched him. I just had to retreat immediately because I was like I got I, I felt sick after that oh yeah I'm sure it, it it had to have given you the creeps I got my train of thought back and then I lost it again but um, you know it's it's it, it's the people like that, that that just lie to us and and you know tell us these things to make us believe that everything's going to be just fine when it, it just further accelerates their agenda and, and people now here's my opinion here's my take when Fox News was talking about Hillary Clinton um, and, and her failure to protect Chris Stevens when he asked time and again for more security at Benghazi because they were being you know monitored a lot and, and the only security they got was this um, Friday the 13th Brigade or something like that of these uh, Al, Al Qaeda um, okay. terrorists well. that were supposed to be protecting them. So that was their security. Well, they said that she and Chris Stevens were close personal friends, and it just got me to thinking um, I could be wrong um, that maybe Chris, maybe Bill Clinton wasn't the only one getting his thing, you know, serviced in the White House back in the day, and maybe Hillary was doing her own thing because you know. You know, she has her needs too, right? So maybe, just maybe, Chris Stevens. I'm, and then I'm just been speculating here, mind you. But mm -hmm. uh, maybe he was going to expose not only their gun running to the Syrian rebels through Benghazi, because why else would the CIA be in Libya with its proximity? Um, you know, Libya is is actually Africa, and uh, you know their their population, like Iran, I believe, like Iran, they are they're Persian. And uh, you know they're not they're they're not so much Egyptian Arabs as much as you know they lead us to believe. Um, I, I think I'm not you know I'm I'm, I'm not real dialed in on that. But I, if she was having an affair with Chris Stevens and he was going to expose uh, a few things, maybe uh, he had to go. You know, kind of like uh, loose ends. You know, it, it it's just you know just I'm just saying. You know, it could it, that that that's just my thing. When somebody said on Fox News they were very close personal friends, well, how close were they? Yeah, so, it does make you think. I'm just putting it out there. Um, could be wrong, but that's just uh, I, I probably am wrong. But you know, as diabolical as these people are, what, what you know, why is that hard to believe? 
nothing's hard to believe. I, I mean, just there's so much corruption going on, and if they feel that their agenda is going to be exposed, and they're going to take every measures to dispose of anybody that's exposing them. Yeah, and, and discredit. Or discredit. And, and, and distract. Um, you know, again, I, I reiterate, you know, you're, 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 it's the presto change your right hand you're watching while the left hand's reaching in your back pocket. Right. Um, but the UN is, uh, United Nations, you know, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. They are the global arm of the new world order. And they're half the, I would say half the troops the UN has. Um, most of them probably sent by us um, aren't even aware of what they're doing I mean there's a lot of warriors in this world that don't realize the true agenda of the war they think they're fighting patriotically until um, they get out and they realize they're, they're being shammed that's when, yes. that's when they become aware of how badly they have been screwed and that's why they were labeled as terrorists, because yep. it's then after they get out and realize that they're not being upholded as serving our country, and they come back to not having the benefits that they should or the honor that they should, that's when they realize, what have I been fighting for? That's when the government realizes, oh, they came back and realized we just sent them out like pawns in a Ponzi scheme and yes. we're going to label them as terrorists because they're dangerous at this point. And, and th that's, that's part, part of my, you know, point. Exactly. You know, I, I, I'm ignorant about a lot of stuff. Religion is one of them, which is why I don't give religion a lot of, uh, I'm not religious, but I don't bash anybody's religion. No, I never ever. judge anybody. I don't. And, and I don't bash Allah. I don't say I say GD, but I don't add a profane adjective and it cringe every time I hear somebody say it um, because I know that if there is a God or or whatever, when when I meet my Maker, I'm going to have my own sins to go with, but it, one of them will not be having offended them. Um, right. So it's just maybe self preservation for the afterlife if there is one. But you know, the thing is, there's so many things. And what I ask people when they don't, you know, believe that 9-11 was an inside job, I, I ask them if they believe that there just might be animals on this earth, you know, mammals, that nobody's ever seen before, undiscovered animals. And their answer, of course, yeah, probably somewhere. And what about under the under the ocean? Do you think there's there's sea life under the ocean that nobody's ever seen before? That oh, absolutely. Yet to be We've explored well, space, but we haven't explored in depth. You know, under well, the right. ocean. Well, that's what I tell people about. You know, I don't. I am. You know, there's nothing wrong with being ignorant. It's it, it's being stupid, ignorant that is the problem. No you know, common sense. Uh, Einstein said, "Condemnation before investigation is the height of ignorance." So when you put your hands over your ears and say "la la 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 la," when I'm trying to tell you or show you something that you don't want to see because it'll just blow your image of what's really going on in your world that that's ignorance that's just complete ignorance and so you know and people that think oh there's no such thing as ufos or no such thing as ghosts well i don't know i'm not a ufologist but i can tell you this much all these people that say they've seen them um millions and millions of them um are they all wrong i mean are, are these people that are psychics which i do believe have these powers to um, medium, you know, uh, other forces in this in our force field. I don't know anything about that stuff, but I know that there are people that do, and I don't. I wouldn't believe, be on a Rick radio if I, I would, didn't know. I would be a fool to say there's no such thing as ghosts or UFOs because I don't know anything about them. I'm ignorant on the subject, but I'll be damned if I'm going to say that they don't exist because they probably do. So I'd say they undoubtedly do. Um, and we're probably borrowing technology from the ones that crashed here because our radar brought down their, their craft, oh, allegedly, this is from what I understand. Well, my, um, take, my take is, it's like, this seems like deja vu for me. 
It's the same song and dance. At some point, we've got to get it right and stop it. Throughout history, in different forms, it's happened over and over and over again. When are we going to stop that stream? Exactly. Uh, we don't need half the population to wake up. We just need 20% to restore our republic the way to, to the way it was. Because this group called OathKeepers.org is a great, great organization. And um, <laughs> they, they, what they're doing is waking up former and current military and police um, to the fact that they did take an oath. And just because you're out of service doesn't mean that you, that you disavow that oath. So, you know, uh, to protect against all enemies, foreign and domestic. The <laughs> biggest terrorists that we have to fear are inside the beltway of Washington, D.C. Right. That, that's the fact. That's, that's where evil exists and, and does most of its dirty business. Um, I know she had played Def Leppard. I love Def Leppard. And, and I just caught the, the word I, I could use to describe it is one of their title tracks called Hysteria. Um, Absolutely. And, and that's what's going, what's going on in this world. Yeah, yeah, we we uh, we have a few Def Leppard tunes uh, lined up. Oh, I'm a huge uh, fan. We have uh, we have Billy's got a gun. If you want to finish that off for the rest of the show before we do the handoff, what do you say about that, there, Adam? Well, oh, hey, it works for me, brother. We've actually but, got a couple yeah. of them. We let's, let's do that. They're, they're, they're a British band, let's, but uh, Britain is more awake than we are because their media yeah. actually tells them what's going on. Well, with the exception of BBC, they have to pay for television. You know that? Yeah. They have to pay yeah. for a license to have a television. Huh. Me, I just don't watch it. <laughs> uh, we don't ha- We haven't had cable in five years, and don't plan on having it ever again. But I don't even have an antenna. <laughs> uh, you don't have rabbit ears. I don't have anything. I need to buy one of those adapters and. Uh, I've got a really nice antenna. It's just until I get a digital converter box, I'm not buying a nice television because I don't watch enough of it. It's the best thing that happened to me is losing my cable. Oh, you know, yeah. I moved, I moved into this house and it had cable. I'm like, oh, cool, free cable. Um, well, then when they turned it off, I never turned it back on. It's the best thing that happened to me. Right. So, it's been the best thing it, for us. I don't care to have all it. Right. Or neither hey, one yeah, of us. Get well, real information off the internet. That's let's, right. Uh, let's let's bring it into the show well, and here. Before uh, we do, because this is we got our last five minutes going on, we're going to go into some music. And Adam, we are so honored that you've been with us tonight, and we will have you on again. We will chat with you after the show. The honor um, is all mine. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a, you. Have a great right. night, and I'll talk to you in a little bit. All right. Alrighty. All right. Thank you, brother. Peace. 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 